This video is sponsored by NextPCB. If you click on the link in the description below, you get to this website. After you can collect your free offer, then on the top right you can quote no. Then you set your settings for the PCB. In the end click calculate. Then on the right side then you can choose the correct country and the rest follow the step. About three weeks ago I uploaded a video about the first version of the soap dispenser. But there I didn't went to the, the build process or the electronic or the 3D printing part. I got a lot of good feedback and a lot of people downloaded the parts from GrabCAD and Thingiverse. So I decided in this video to do to go more into details of the soap dispenser version 2. I made a lot of optimizations and improvements. <laughs> but more about that after the intro. Okay, first of all, in the version 1, the, uh, there was a current about 50 milliamps, and that 24 hours, 7, we 7 days in the week. Okay, that was too much, because with this small battery, it holds only 2 days. And with the new version, I decided to make it during the night, it doesn't need much power with the LDR sensor and so it needs during the night about 300 microamps and the no another improvement is that the servo it doesn't run with the Arduino library so it doesn't need any power if it is um, if it is holding but it, it, it hasn't a holding torque, so. And another improvement is I protected the battery for discharge too much. And yeah, that's very important for LiPo batteries. Finito. Okay, you know the first version, which I did three weeks ago. Okay, this is just for for one specific soap bottle, and now I wanted to do it more individual, so it can be used for many different soap bottles or soap dispensers. Then I printed a lot of 3D printed parts, but they weren't very well, and I wanted to do it that it is very nice. So I tested how can I move these parts, and it was the first. That looks very great. You see, I can screw, and it goes inside. And that is just amazing. You can adjust the variable's uh, height. Okay, like this. And on the top, I printed a hat. And I can also do that. So that's very nice. Okay, so are you're very variable. 
And you can fix the height with screws which go inside inside the hole and presses against the 3D printer port. Okay, then for the servo, I printed this part. Yeah, it goes inside here. And it goes inside this. And you can move this out or in. And yeah, this you can fix it with this screw which goes inside this and it holds the servo in place. And then of course the horn which pulls to the soap dispenser goes to this. Okay. So very nice. Okay, what you can do for this movement, for the arm for example, so that the screw are in place and you can put it inside, then you take the soldering, soldering iron So you push against, in this case, to the left. Wait. And if it is very hot, it goes slowly inside. Okay, and if it is in place, make sure you can rotate it. Maybe. Yes. And do quickly at the, the hole, the arm. So they are in the correct position and wait until it is cold. Okay, we have different electronic parts. The very small ICs, and now we have a look to the data sheet and to the circuit. Okay, first of all, the power supply on the top left, then to a capacitor gives the whole system more stability, and it goes to this IC. This IC it protects the battery from discharge too much. And if we have a look to the data sheet, we can a voltage high sense, low sense. And you see if the voltage, battery voltage, VDD, it is falling down under the low sense, the reset goes low. And if it goes over the voltage high sense, it goes high. And so you can protect the whole circuit or you you can protect the battery from discharge too much okay and the voltage low sense and high sense you can con calculate with this formula and then it gives a voltage and you can calculate the correct the correct voltage from the battery but yeah I don't want to go too deep inside this. Okay, back to the circuit. That there we have <coughs> LDR1, LDR2, that the external, and this goes to the photoresistor. And if it is dark, then this MOSFET. Um, let the, the voltage through this and it pulls the whole 
this point to the ground. And so it is zero voltage on here. And so the, the power supply it is, isn't enabled. Okay, this is the power supply. Uh, I see you can give a voltage about 6 volts to 16 volt and then it gives a very specific uh, voltage out. In this case it's 5 volt and this 5 volt goes directly to the microcontroller. Okay, let's have a look to the datasheet. Okay, we have this circuit and the, the current, this is, yeah, it is 500 milliamps, not, yeah, that is with V0 is 0 volt, it's, it's nearly a short circuit. Okay, but uh, the level, lo logic level, high and low. Uh, it is the voltage under 0.4 volt. It is off, and this means for it is for the enable input pin. Under the 0.4 volt, it is off, and above 2 volt, it is on. And the current is typical 3 microamps and 0.01 microamp. And yeah. This 700 kilo ohm resistor. That's because of this enable input pin. And we have a look to the circuit. That is this 220 k resistor and the 470 k. It gives 690 k resistor. So the current is about 10 microamps, which I calculated here with 10 microamps. Everything is okay, but one problem I have is with the sensor because the 3D filament lets too much light through the filament, so the sensor doesn't direct to the LED. But I can fix this with shrinking tube, which I pull over this, and let's do this. So, and I hope this is much better. You can test. Test it now. Okay, it's much better. But I have to... But I have to change in the software the value which the, which the sensor reacts. Yeah, I definitely have to change the value. First we have the two outputs, LED and servo. Then you have the parameters. Go to the setup loop. 
and if you want to have information in the serial monitor you have to uncomment this line then set it output in the loop we write first the LED high then we wait set the value to zero and in the for loop we read the analog input and then we add it to the value and in this line we calculate the average and then in the if condition we start the servo and we make this with the for loop it starts with the start position we write the servo high wait a specific time set it low and wait a specific time then do it again with the speed until it is reached the end position of the servo and on this loop it is the same but in the other direction I designed the PCB board for this project but I didn't receive it yet but after I received it I will check the PCB board if everything is okay and then I will share with you the Gerber file Thanks for watching this video I would appreciate it if you liked the video and you are the best if you subscribe to my channel Goodbye!